Hi, I'm Ralph Langner. I came across some new video footage on the internet about the Natanz fuel enrichment plant, which really completes our understanding of Stuxnet in some very important ways. And, I, and this is what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you remember my analysis of Stuxnet titled To Kill a Centrifuge, and you, if you haven't read that, you can download that report from our website www.langner.com for free. Now, if you remember that analysis, uh, you know that very important aspects of the analysis go back to analyzing video footage about Natanz that we had obtained. And we did a frame by frame analysis of a very short video sequence, one minute video sequence that showed some very important details like the uh, pressure controller that is used in Natanz. So that allows allowed us really uh, some very good breakthroughs now i uh, i think uh, this new video footage that i have discovered uh, has some um, similar potential because it really completes our understanding so the video that i'm talking about you can access it on youtube it's it's a very um, entertaining video about the city of natanz a half a half an hour video uh, you will see some pottery, you will see uh, museums in Natanz, and you get some really nice insights into the Natanz fuel enrichment plant. So without further ado, let's uh, look at the details. This is a very nice shot from uh, right in the middle of the Cascade Hall, so you can see all the centrifuge stands on the left and on the right. Uh, there, are, there are some centrifuge cascades. Look at the, the plumbing in the front, no uh, INC there. Oh, sloppy maintenance, sloppy maintenance, guys. There is a, there's a signal cable hanging down, obviously from a vibration sensor. Then we get this uh, nice view along the aisle. In the back there, you see a control system cabinet. Lots of sensors, most likely vibration sensors that are that can be seen right here with uh, black cables. And uh, here is uh, the the piping color coded with blue and yellow. Blue is the product pipe, and uh, yellow is the tails pipe. As it, as it can also be seen on the uh, skater screens in To Kill a Centrifuge. Now oh, this is probably the coolest control room you have ever seen, right? So if you have ever been in a real control room, you know that things are very much different. <laughs> uh, all those flowers, look at, at the, the space that they have. Uh, uh, by the way, they don't really need to wear these, these masks. Uh, it's, it's more for show, as you can see with this guy here. He just took his mask off and nobody cares. But look at all the flower bouquets. Oh, uh, nice tree there in the middle. Uh, isn't that a perfect work envi environment? The other thing that, that really kicked me was, uh, look what the bastards did. They made very sure that you can't see anything on screen. So, so the, the screens are completely blurred. However, we, we see in very good detail that this guy, this expert is using two mouses. Uh, that, that's really a kicker. So just look at all those screens. You can't see anything. And obviously they, uh, that is a re reaction of our analysis on the earlier SCADA screens. Now let's get to the most important part, most interesting thing in that whole footage. So uh, remember to kill a centrifuge where I told you that there is this notable difference in tactics between the first version of Stuxnet and the second version. Where the first version was super, super stealthy, couldn't be recognized by uh, the engineers. Whereas the second attack, well, not so much for a couple of reasons. And, and one of the most striking things for me back in the days was that if you manipulate the rotor speed, that most likely you would be able to hear that in the cascade hall. Unfortunately, at that time, we didn't have any footage about the real noise level in the Cascade Hall. So we, we really didn't know if it was audible or not. But guess what? Now we got the footage and now we can tell for sure 
that the engineers must have been able to audibly detect the attack. And I tell you how that's going to work. So in the next clip, please pay attention to the background noise. What you hear is the original noise of the centrifuges spinning at normal operating speed. فشار سنج ها دما سنج ها تماما در اختیار اپراتور هستند تا بتونه میزان گاز ورودی به ماشین ها رو کنترل بکنه صحیح. و در نهایت مقدار و غنای اون محصولی که میخواد از زنجیره بگیره What you hear is centrifuges spinning at roughly 59000 rpm and how can we tell that because of the tone so if you just use an, a sound generator, uh, then you can easily uh, verify that. Now I'm going to play you a tone with 980 hertz, which translates to roughly 59,000 RPM. Okay, got it. Once more. In the uh, roller speed attack, in the first run, the centrifuges are sped up to 83,000 RPM, which translates to 1,400 Hertz. Now I'm going to play you a 1,400 Hertz tone. Did you hear the difference? I just do it once more. Well, I think that's quite striking, isn't it? But it even gets better when you consider that in the next iteration of the rotor speed attack, the uh, centrifuges are almost stopped. So the attackers kick the brake and they drive the rotors down to 120 RPM. That translates to 2 Hertz. Well, two hertz is, is such a deep tone that you cannot even hear it. But in other words, they are taking the centrifuge th through the whole range of audible tones down to uh, two hertz. Uh, your, your, um, uh, your ears uh, would probably stop hearing anything at, at about 20 hertz. So in other words, the engineers in the cascade hall must have been able to hear that something was at odds with the rotor speeds. And you might, you may now think, well, wait a second, if you, in, in that big cascade hall, if you mess around with one centrifuge, uh, the noise is probably uh, overwritten by all the other couple of thousand centrifuges. But that's not right, that is not correct, because the, the rotor speed attack affects at least one whole cascade of 164 centrifuges, and at best, six cascades or almost 1,000 centrifuges at once, which is one of the more bizarre aspects of the roller speed attack because when the attack is started, um, the, uh, the six cascades that are connected to the S7315 are synchronized via WinCC. How damn cool is that, right? And I still don't know exactly why the attackers did it, but it looks like they wanted to make very sure that the Iranian engineers must notice it. They must have heard that. So that is um, uh, the more bizarre uh, <laughs> insight that we are gaining from this new video footage. It is apparent to me that, as it was already um, alleged, in To Kill a Centrifuge, that in the second version of Stuxnet, the attackers really didn't care that much about OPSEC. They really didn't care to stay super stealthy under the cover. So it was uh, just a question of time. And I'm talking not in years or months, I'm talking uh, in, in weeks when uh, the Iranian engineers would detect that attack, that what, that what was going on. And certainly once that, that they knew positively that their uh, that their rotor speeds were manipulated they would have a closer look at the controllers 
So uh, that's what I wanted to tell you. I, I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. And uh, if you like this video, you might also like the other stuff that we do. Please check out our website www.langmore.com.